Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is Fair Value Finder, and today we're looking at the Eastman Chemical Company, ticker EMN. This is a company that I have held for quite some time. I first bought back mid-2019. I currently own 13 shares at an average cost of $77. They had earnings yesterday after market close, and so far today they're up nearly 6%. So let's take a look at what the heck's going on with the stock, why is it up, and what is a fair value for it. So as we see, we're kind of trading in this range, uh, somewhere between 110 and 68. It broke into this range back in 2013 and has kind of been bouncing in and out of it. Short times, it uh, shoots out above and below, but it comes right back into this range. Uh, we were following a pretty good uptrend for quite some time. That was broken uh, mid of 2021. And we've been on a downtrend ever since. We're still riding that downtrend down. These earnings actually helped us pop back up above it. So that could be good news that we, we'd be starting a new uptrend, maybe something along the lines of this right here. And we could ride it back up to the $100 range. And here we are looking at the fundamentals for the company. So we see a lot of red over here. Last year was an awful year for them, which is probably the cause of that downtrend that we've been seeing. Uh, they have had weak demand and they've had rising expenses while their revenue drops. And that's the story that we've seen on a few of these companies, which is definitely not what we want to look at. What they say in their earnings report does give hope, though. So that's most likely why the stock is rebounding, and we'll get to that right after we take a look at these. So we almost need to just ignore this last year uh, because of how awful it was um, and look more at the long-term trend. Hopefully they can get back to this and we don't see so much red. Uh, so we see 4.5% year-over-year growth. That's not bad, not quite in the range that we like to see, but it is a established brand and it is a dividend stock. Uh, cost of goods is climbing way faster than that revenue, 6.25% year over year. The gross profit is declining for 1.5%, while the net income climbs 1.5%. Expenses have been rising 5.8%. Uh, the EBIT has been rising 1.2%. Gross profit declining 5.7%. Net profit percentage declining 2.9%, and EPS, the earnings per share, have been climbing 12.6%. You see this time, I've included the actual earnings per share numbers from each year, so that way we can take a look down here and see, typically, the stock, they've been all over the place. They bounce between the 10s and the 20s for their EPS, giving us an average in our time frame of 14.3%. So we can take this 20 and replace it to see that based on how this stock typically performs, we'd be looking at an EPS share price of uh, around $113. And then we can adjust this one as well and see expectations this year are $7.77 in EPS. That is down from last year, uh, which would give us a slightly down valuation using that metric of $111.34. Still well above the current share price of $85. And then we can move on to the assets. The assets have been declining 2.9% uh, year over year. That is not a trend that we really like to see. The liabilities have been declining. That is a trend that we like to see. Uh, we hope to see it larger than the decline in the assets, but it is down 1.9%. And the book value, we do have a positive book value on this stock. It was negative in 2019. They've been progressing since then, making great gains. Uh, through that metric, we're looking at a share value of $132. And with the trend that they're on, we'd be looking at a share value of $129. So through those last two metrics, we are seeing a slight decline in the stock value. Free cash flow. We're seeing it declining nearly 30% year over year, but this last year was awful. 
we adjust our formula to factor out 2022 and just look at from 2019 to 2021, we see a decline year over year of 1.8%. Uh, that'd give us a share value around $59 and the same moving forward. The share count has been declining. They've been buying back just over 4% every year. That is something that we like to see. That is a large number that they're buying back. The shareholder equity has been declining. Um, that's not something that we really like to see. Uh, that's not a huge surprise with the movement of the assets declining. Uh, we, we're looking at a decline of nearly 4.7% year over year. And their dividend, they are a strong dividend grower. Uh, they've been growing it on nearly 6.2% year over year. This last year was only 39 I was a little upset when I saw it come out because it was lower than I was expecting. But they have a current yield of 3.9%, and I'd be willing to pay around $90.30 for that kind of dividend. Uh, going forward, we'd be looking something close to $94. So all in all, we'd be looking at a share price. These numbers are all over the place, somewhere between $60 and $132. I know that's a very large range. Uh, I'd say something around $100 I'd be willing to pay for this stock. And we are seeing slight declines across the board for these numbers if they come in on trend. But the earnings give hope. We see typically this stock has about a 3.3% dividend yield. Uh, way back in 2021, it was significantly lower. The stock price was very high. The financials were great. They rebounded from their uh, bottom due to COVID. Incredibly, they dropped down to $40 and they jumped all the way up to uh, nearly $130. Peter Lynch gives a formula where he uses the uh, growth in earnings for a company and the dividend that they pay out, as well as the current, the trailing 12 months PE ratio to determine whether a stock is fair valued, overvalued, or undervalued. And the higher the number, this gives the better the value is there. So anything under a one is overvalued, a one is fair value, above a one is undervalued. And that this is giving me a 1.6. So that agrees with what I'm seeing that there's value left here in the stock, especially if they can do this turnaround that they're talking about, we could see the price rebound up back to the $100 level, which would be up nearly 20% from where it's at today. Now let's get into these earnings to see exactly what they're seeing. And here we have the financial results for the first quarter of 2023. We'll start with the summary that they have at the top. They talk about disciplined pricing, lower costs, and efficient operations. They demonstrate commercial excellence, holding prices stable to the fourth quarter despite weak demand and continued consumer inventory destocking. So they're talking about how the supply chain has changed and their consumers are just holding less on their shelves where they're moving more towards a just in time inventory rather than holding just in case. Uh, they saw continued progress on circular economy platform, which is a new vector for growth for the company. That's something that we like to see. They're divesting a little bit going in, uh, different directions that can help bring growth. They're on track to reduce cost structure by more than $200 million net of inflation. We saw uh, cost of goods growth of nearly $500 million from 2021 to 2022 and expenses growth of $400 million from 2021 to 2022. So it's good to see that they are on track to reduce their expenses by $200 million but that's still not quite what we want to see. A $200 million reduction in their cost of goods would be approximately 2%, which does break the trend that we've seen of a growth of 6.3%. So they are moving in the right direction. We'd like to see that accelerate going into the future if they are able to cut costs uh, continuing. I have highlighted more down here. Sales revenue decreased 11% to 
due to 9% lower sales volume mix, 6% unfavorable impact of divested business, 2% unfavorable impact from foreign currency, uh, all partially offset by 6% higher selling costs. So it could be that they don't have the type of pricing power that we want to see, rising prices by 6% and seeing a 9% decline in volume. Or it could just be that there's not a whole lot of demand for their products at the moment. But they talk about foreign currency uh, having a 2% impact. We've seen that across a lot of earnings. They're talking about how the changes in currencies have really had an effect on uh, revenues this year. And Eastman does 58% of their business outside of the U.S. So they have a very large foreign impact. They saw a continuation of weak demand and continued customer inventory destocking, as we mentioned earlier. For cash flows, cash used in operating activities was $2 million compared to the cash provided by operating activities of $17 million. The company returned $94 million to stockholders through dividends. They're on track to reduce manufacturing supply chain and non-manufacturing costs by a total of $200 million. Uh, expect to grow adjusted EPS between 5 and 15%. Analysts had them shrinking uh, by 11 cents by 1.4%. So the fact that they see growth, let's see, on the low end of 5%. They're expecting to come in this year at $8.27 in earnings, a minimum, which is something that we like to see. And if we adjust what the analysts have, we move from $111 to $118 for evaluating the earnings per share metric based on the historical PE of the company. And then they say that they're focused on taking a range of actions to deliver $1.4 billion in operating cash flow in 2023. And if they're able to do that, then they'd be looking at a much, much better uh, valuation there. Because right now we're looking at a $59 share price. Even if it can only bring it up to 1.1, uh, that 59 would all of a sudden skyrocket to over $150. We have the actual financial numbers. Uh, we see that there was an 11% decline in sales, as mentioned. Cost of goods were down nearly 13%, so that is a very good sign. Like they said, they're on track to reduce their costs. Their gross profit was down 3.8%, as to be expected with the decline in sales, but the fact that that was down 11 and the gross profit is only down 3.8, that is something good to see. Um, just looking over all of these numbers through here, we see one of the biggest uh, impacts here is asset uh, impairments and restructuring charges net was 22 this year. It was only two last year, and we end up with a significantly lower um, EBIT where we have 246 compared to 333, down nearly 30%. Uh, down here, 32.4%, which brings us down to an earnings per share of $1.13 compared to $1.82 last year. So they expect a lot of growth to come later on in this year if they do expect 5 to 15% growth uh, with the first quarter starting out like this. We do see a rather large decrease in the shares, share count, which is something that we really like to see. And then they have uh, the product mix just like others. Uh, we see revenue change down 99% in other it looks like whatever they were bringing money in has completely dissolved. Uh, for there, chemical intermediates are down 18%. This is where we can see their pricing power. We see that they rose prices 10% on advanced materials and still saw 1% growth, 4% on additives, and they saw 13% decline. Uh, five per, they dropped the price of chemical intermediates 5% and still saw an 18% decline. Uh, the fibers, they grew 40% on the prices, and they saw 42% increase. So fibers seem to be their growing and main source of business. And that's what they need to be focusing on, which they talked about up above. 
And those are the numbers that we care about. I like what I see the company talking about. Um, I don't see them coming in at the EPS that they're expecting, but we'll see. Maybe they'll have a great uh, rest of the year. It seems to be like they think that they will. And if they can decrease those costs, what's hurting them the most are increased costs, um, low and decreasing revenues, but somehow they're still managing to grow their EPS. If they can grow their assets and their cash flows, I'd be buying. For right now, I'd still give it a buy rating because it is undervalued. There's quite some upside to it. Like I said, I see an, a nearly 20% up. And with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Please let me know what other stocks you'd like me to take a look at, and I will catch you next time.